NLE Choppa <laughs> is here in studio with us. Live in the flesh. Oh, I'm so excited. When they told me the celebrity uh, participants that are going on tonight, I said, you have to get NLE Choppa with it's me. They're like, he'll do it. He'll do it. He's around. <laughs> and you have, you have gone to a lot of games this year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of them. How, so you got the same seat usually every time. How many? And even when I, I was telling these guys earlier, when mm. I went to Apple Music, you know how mm. they have that rotating thing at the top? Yeah. You've got the Navy... Grizzlies jersey on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that. <laughs> so how many how many would you say you've been to this year? Um, uh, at least around like eight or nine. And it's usually whenever I come back to Memphis. And I'm I'm barely I'm rarely in Memphis because of my working schedule, but whenever I'm here and I know it's a game, I'm there, you know. Who who are you the biggest fan of? Uh Kennedy Chandler. You know, me and Kennedy we played basketball and football when we were younger. So just to see him be able to play for an NBA team, get drafted. Uh, it's like one of those things that just like I'm looking at him like my brother. I'm like, you know, he made it. He's doing something well. And it's just not me. It's a lot of people that I grew up with doing well right now. How are you guys buddies? How mm. like, Tell me about you and Kennedy Chandler and kind of how far you guys go back. Man, we go way back. I remember uh, my favorite memory with him was like, um, see, Kennedy, everybody don't know, Kennedy kind of spoiled. <laughs> so, like, when when um, when when a, when a new Madden head came out, I, it was um, for his birthday, I went to his birthday party and then after that we went back to his to his home and had a sleepover and um he had the new Madden and I remember he didn't take it out the plastic yet and I really wanted to play it. I was like, Yo, I wanna play the Madden man, why you ain't trying to play it? And he he was like, No, nah, I don't wanna play it. So he ended up playing it and he was the only one that wanted to play it. Like he had two controllers but he wanted to play just by himself. It make you like, watch? I was like, He yeah, made you I watch like, it. I was like, What's going on? <laughs> I'm like, Kennedy for real. So you know, we ended up playing Madden, but that was my first time playing a new Madden. I think it was Madden 13, if I'm not mistaken. How old would you think? How old are you? Man, at that we time? was young. I was, I'm 20 now. That was about seven years ago. I think it was about 13, or I think I was younger than that, like 11, 10. Was it, was it neighborhood? Like, were you guys? Were you guys friends from the neighborhood? Were you friends just from playing um, sports? No, where? sports. Sports yes. kind of brought it together. You know, him, him, and, um, me and his and his pops was always real close. My mom and his pops. We're real close because we started out playing football together, and then um, we started to play basketball together as well. You know, who were you playing for? Um, so football, I didn't, I didn't attend Briarcrest, but for some reason they had me playing for Briarcrest football team. I don't know how that worked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I was just that good. I was real good in football, so. They had me playing football. Wait, wait, with wait! You didn't go to school there, but you played football yeah. for them. It was like when we was um, I was I was like I think it was about third grade, fourth grade, something like that. But no, no, I think it was fifth, fifth and sixth grade. So it was about around that age, and um, I was playing football with them, and it was me and him playing running back. So we was the ones in the backfield, and we we had speed out of the world. We was just dominating every team. And then after that, it grew to playing basketball. We played with Team Penny on the circuit or whatnot, and um. After that, I kind of went towards the rapping route, and I ended up blowing up. And Kennedy ended up, he kept hooping in school, and now he's in the NBA. So when you at that age, are you thinking, I'm going to be an athlete? Um, I kind of knew I wasn't because I was always good. I was, a, I was terrific at basketball, but, like, behavior-wise, I could never stay out of trouble. So I was like, okay, let me be reasonable, the type of person I am. Uh, even though how hard I try, it's like I always find myself in some type of trouble. So I was like, what could I do to target my energy towards something that's, that brings independence to where if if I if it go wrong, I have no other person to blame but myself. And if I get in trouble, it won't affect how I, you know, can go to the studio. Like, you know, if you get in trouble, you ain't going to play. You get your playtime done, you might get cut from the team. But I was more so in the space of like, if I got in trouble... It was nothing that could be like, oh, you cut from the studio or you cut from rapping. Like, that was a you type of thing. So um, I found that was was easier, and it worked out for me. What were you getting in trouble for? Oh, uh, it was anything, man. I ain't going to lie. Like, I was just the pettiest thing. It could be just simply, like, flushing the teammate's shoes down the toilet or stopping <laughs> up the toilet. Like, I was one of them. And it could go to the biggest things to, like, want to get in fights with teammates or whatever. But... I wasn't never like a problematic person. It was just um She couldn't stay out of trouble. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> All right, so at what point do you start rapping? Um I started rapping at, at fourteen. I start, I ripped my first song at fourteen and um at fifteen I dropped my first song and it got like a hundred thousand views in a month. So when they did that I was like, Okay, 
I said, I feel like this is my calling. Uh, my first song just did 100,000 views in a month. I said, I'm destined for this. Did you rap over a beat that mm -hmm. uh, was already out there, like a popular beat? Or mm -hmm. where'd you find it? Or what happened? It was an original song. You know, I found the beat off YouTube, and I just wrote a song about... Um, about a girl, uh, about a girl I was dealing with at the time, you know, 15, 14 year old type <laughs> thing, and I and I wrote like pretty much a heartbreak song, and uh, it was very relatable to a lot of other teenagers, I guess, and even people that was older than me, and it sparked traction and went it went viral. So where'd you load it? Huh? Oh, YouTube? To YouTube, and I. So you put it up on YouTube, and mm -hmm. is anybody helping you at that point, or no, is it just it is it your own account? How did people come around to it? How did people find it? You think? Um, social media, you know, Instagram helped me a lot. I was posting it, promoting it that way. Um, I even went through, I even went through going through distro, distro kid to where I could have, I uploaded it to Apple Music and Spotify and all those things by myself. So I was pretty much working like on my own. I had my own label at 15, my own brand. I had songs coming out. I even had my own artist at 15. Who helped you? It was just me. Music. Nobody, me. but I mean, hey, you have to know how to do this stuff. Are you looking it I up mean, on the I internet? Was, I, was or look, you... I was looking things up like how to get my music on Apple Music or how to get my music on Spotify. Uh, how to upload it to YouTube. Um, actually, I think him, my man right here, Abel, he uploaded one of my, he's uploaded some of my videos and stuff to YouTube before. So, but it was pretty much just me doing basic research and um, just pouring it to the dream I had. So you put it up on YouTube, and mm -hmm. at what point does it start to get, like, a lot of traction? How long um, after you put it up? Um, like, like I said, like it was a month go by and it had like a hundred thousand views and it was in just the on, first month. Yeah. And it was just on the audio. Like people literally was, you know, YouTube, I feel is a visual distribution. Like if you sure. go to YouTube, you want to watch the music video. Like you don't too much want to go to YouTube to listen to an audio. You can do that on Apple. But the fact that it had a hundred thousand views in a month as an audio with no video, um, said a lot about the music and just said a lot about what God had over my life. It's crazy. Now, is it, are you labeling it, is your name on there NLE Chopper at the time? Um, it was YNR Chopper. Yeah. YNR Chopper. Uh huh. That's, what, think, that's what you uploaded it as. Yeah. Mm hmm. And then further on, I, a little bit later on after that, I switched it to NLE because I wanted to brand myself something that was genuine to me, you know, all the way towards me. Okay. So at what point? Once it hits like the hundred thousand or whatever, at mm -hmm. what point does somebody start paying attention that can really help you? Um, I remember like ten ten songs after the fact, and um, really like a year later. Did you put out like a mixtape or something? Uh, I dropped a mixtape. Um, it just wasn't the biggest mixtape, but I dropped a mixtape, and a lot of people around the city, around my pe my peers. They were enjoying it, but it was one day I dropped this one song with a group of my friends. It was called No Chorus Part 3, and it took the city by storm. Like, it, it, it went crazy. Currently, I think it's at, like, 5 million views right now, and that's just, that's just because it's not even promoted. There's, like, 5 million views to me is, like, kind of, like, not, like, it's, it's, it's... That's not big. Yeah, it's not big to no, me. You not know, for but, your songs. But when... When it happened during that time period, it got like 400,000 views in a month. And it was like my biggest song to date during that time. And after that, I was on the song with five other people, but everyone kept asking like, yo, who was that first guy? Who was who that first guy rapping? And everyone rapped good, everybody did their part, but I feel like I just shined in a different type of way on the song. And it wasn't anything musically, cause I feel like my verse wasn't even the best verse. I feel like um, it was a guy named Chucky on there. I loved his verse. It was a guy named DB on there. I loved his verse. Um, but I feel like it was just the aura I had that made people attract and be like, yo, who is this kid? And once I, figured, once I found out everybody was looking for more of me, I followed up with Shot of Flow um, January like 17th, and that's when my life changed forever. So are you in school at the time while you're putting mm -hmm. this stuff out? You're still yeah, going to what, school. Cordova High School? Yeah, I was in Cordova High School, going to school. Um, and I remember when... How are you paying attention to school while this is going on outside of school? Man, I wasn't. Like, I was just <laughs> going there. I was just going there to go, like... Because you had to. Yeah, I wasn't doing no work. I was like, yo, <laughs> I wasn't doing no work. I was just going there laughing and cracking jokes out. And you thought, I'm going to be a famous rapper. Yeah. And it was like... But I mean, you were right. Yeah, yeah. And when Shadowflow was popping off, I, um, Shadowflow was my biggest song. It, it did like, 
I went to sleep, it had 5,000 views in a day, and when I woke up, it was like at 20. And then when I, by the end of the week, it was like at a million. Like, so it was grow, it was growing, growing, like unbelievable. You're still in school when that song comes out? Yep. You're I, in what, 10th grade? Yeah, I was in 10th grade. I was going to school. I was like, yo, I'm good now. I can sleep in. Like, I was sleeping in. I was going to school, like, fifth period, like, lunch, <laughs> around lunch. <laughs> like, around after lunch, you got two more periods. So I was lunch is pretty much like, it's like your fifth period, I believe, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But when I got out of lunch, I had two more classes. I had sixth period and seventh period and then dismissal. I was just going to fifth period. I would, I would get there at lunch, and I'd finish the rest of my day at the last two periods. What did your parents say while this is going on? Um, man, I, the, my mom was the first person I called when I realized I was blowing up because I knew she had to be my manager. I ain't trust nobody else to be it. So I hit her and I was like, yo, I was like, I'm blowing up. I'm everywhere. She hung up on me the first time because she thought I was playing on her phone. And I called her back. I'm like, mama, for real, they want to fly us out. They want to take us to, to L.A. to meet with us. Labels want to meet with us and do all these things. And um, I said, you know what, stay on the call. And I added the label representative on the phone, and um, they pretty much talked her through it. She thought they were still pranking her, and she didn't believe it till we got on the flight. <laughs> and then you guys went out to L.A.? Yeah, and we met, we met with every label in a span of a month. We, let, we met with every label except, like, two. But every label in the world wanted me, and it was a bidding war over me. When was their first time that, like, uh, somebody you really looked up to or another famous rapper, like, mm -hmm. paid you mind? Like, so, like, you saw they either commented mm -hmm. on it mm -hmm. or even reached out to you personally, whatever it may be. Man, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to have to go with the most recent to me, and it's just being able to link with Lil Wayne. You know what I'm saying? I grew up watching Wayne. I grew up listening to Wayne. You know, you, that's someone you grow up, you look up to. I always admired how he was always himself. He did what he wanted to do, when he wanted to do, however he wanted it to be. And um, he made great music. So to, for me to be able to meet Lil Wayne and we have a song together and to shoot the video with him and to be able to tell him how much I appreciate him and for him to reciprocate that energy right back to me, um, it was a dream come true, you know. And to this day, he check, he texts me, check up on me and everything. So. It's crazy how you can go from looking at somebody as a child and admiring them to being a friend, you know, right. being, being, being someone they can call on. So it means a lot. How'd you deal with fame? Mm. That's a lot yeah, for a 16-year-old, right? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you're 16 years old. As you said, mm -hmm. there's a bidding war. Mm -hmm. You go from a kid that's just going to Cordova High School that doesn't mm -hmm. really like school anyway <laughs> yeah. to a kid that's now got shot of flow, million views in a mm -hmm. week, all these record labels wanting you. You know mm. you're about to make a lot of money. You know mm. you're about to become an artist. You're, you're famous. Yeah. Like you go from not being famous at all, a regular mm. kid at a Memphis high school, mm. to famous so quickly. Mm. How did you handle that ascent and it being so happening all so quickly? Man, just um. I'm going to be honest, I wasn't the best at handling it because um, it was new. You know, I feel like anything that's new, it brings a new beginning. Um, you're not always going to know everything or you're not always going to know how to deal with things because it's way different than what you was dealing with beforehand. Uh, it was kind of hard at first um, over the span of like two years, 16, 17, 18. It was... Because um, you're just a kid yeah, you know, trying to learn how to deal with it, right? Yeah. So it kind of it kind of got hard for me over like the span of two years because I was getting everything I wanted, but I didn't have nothing I needed. I kind of lost my my daily regimen of just praying. I kind of lost everything that 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 God wanted me to be focused on. I lost it, and I, and I'm honest enough to say I lost it. And um, when when I wanted to to go back on that path to gain it back, he pointed out everything I did wrong. He pointed out all the things I stopped doing. He pointed out all the things that I needed to acquire to get back on track. And that's what was so beautiful about knowing that God is a forgiving and loving God because once I lost that, once I went off track, um, when I was ready to come back home, he, he allowed me back into the kingdom and um, he got me right. And, you know, after that, I started to pray more. I started to um, inquire, I started to acquire meditation. Uh, I went vegan, uh, I don't do any drugs, and I changed the people I hung around. So within that process of me losing the focus or losing the goal, about two years later during like quarantine, 
when when it first hit, um, he sat me down, he isolated me, and he put his hands on me and kind of smacked me. He was like, yo, you know, get back on track. And ever since then, life has been plush because every day after that, I didn't stop to work on myself, you know? Do you think that... Do you think it's partly that it just was not what you thought it was going to be? That oh. now, I'm, now I'm famous, now mm-hmm. I got all this money, now mm-hmm. I've got these videos, now every girl loves me, mm-hmm. that all, and, and all of it wasn't what you thought it was going to be? Yeah, because, you know, what I've been learning now is just less is more. You know what I'm saying? When you have everything, everything is cool, but... Um, less is more because it's more, it's more handle, like you can handle it better. So what I mean by less is more, even though you have all these things, even though everything is coming to you, even though everything is at your doorstep, but everything is not meant for you to take into consideration. Everything doesn't deserve your energy and everything doesn't acquire you to, to, you know, even show it any type of attention. So just knowing that, just knowing that now I'm more in the space of, okay, I had a world, the world is in my hand, but um, with me knowing that I can do anything, that I have the world in my hand, I still got to stay guided, disciplined, and grounded and humble. You know what I'm saying? I was always humble through the process, but disciplined, and, and I kind of lost the guidance. But all of these things is, is, is what's needed when, when you have everything coming towards you because if you're not guided, if you're not disciplined, if you're not grounded, if you're not humble, um, it'd be taken away in a second. How do you how do you stay disciplined? How do you stay humble? I, like all of those mm-hmm. things, like Man. staying organized, yeah. all of these things that you talk about that mm-hmm. have now changed for you. How do you do it? <laughs> Man, just remember where I came from. Just remember how I was at my highs and I went to my lows. And just being uncomfortable with that feeling of being at your lows. Just um, bringing awareness towards it and be like, yo, I'd never be in this space again in my life. Because it was days where when I woke up, I'm like, I don't even want to really be here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So how to, it was like I had to remember. I got to remember. I got to keep that in my mind every day because that's something I overcame. So with me overcoming that mindset, um, that feeling, I know now like it's no going back. So you have to be in tune with your lows. And that's why I love that, you know, life is about balance. You get your highs, you get your lows. You get your good days, you get your bad ones. You get the rain, you get the sun. Because it, it gives you appreciation and it helps you to show gratitude towards, you know, once you get back to that upper echelon, echelon space, it makes you take care of it the next time, you know. A lot of people don't even get that second chance. So I'm just grateful. Was there somebody that talked to you that, like, really got through to you? Or was there um, something that you did or read or watched that you um, thought, like, made some kind of point where you're like, that's me or that's that's right? Um... Just, man, being real strong on prayer, you know. I said one of the strongest prayers I could ever say one day. <laughs> and the next day, um, the next day it was like, it was easy. I was guided. I knew what I had to do. Um, I said a strong prayer, and then the next day I came across, like, meditation. And and not to bring race into anything, but in, in our community, it's not – really talked about to 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 meditate you know what i'm saying you will never walk outside in the hood and hear somebody say yo i just got done meditating like where we come from so it's it's not a norm it's very it's it's extremely not normal you know what i'm saying so i know god talks to you as who you will listen to you know so the next day i went across my phone and i saw this video of a of a black male he was talking about meditation and um i never looked into it but i feel like once i saw him and once I saw it was probably someone that come from the same place I came from, I took heed to it because it was a foreign practice to me. But but the man that said it, I'm like, yo, I've never seen someone talk about meditation of my skin color. So once I heard that, I took heed of it and I tried it. And, and I knew that was God speaking to me after the prayer I had the night before. And after that, man. <laughs> Everything changed. Man, it was crazy. Like, I felt... I felt the most peace I've ever felt in my life just by being in tune with my breath and just taking a deep breath in through the nose, exhaling through the mouth, just just creating a safe space in your mind and all of these things. And it brought awareness to my diet. When I came out of meditation, I tried to eat soul food, cook meat, um, all of this junk food. I'd be in the same state of mind I was before I meditated. When I come into the meditation, come out of my meditation, try to smoke a blunt, I go to the same state of mind before I meditated. 
when I come out of this meditation and hang around people I wasn't supposed to, I'd be in the same state of mind before I meditate. Wow. So it brought awareness to what was throwing off the vibration of my life. So how'd you yeah. learn how to meditate? Um, internet? Huh? Internet? The same video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a guy. He so the guy he was on um, talking about a guided a guided meditation. And um, I looked into it on YouTube. I put my earphones in, and I and I laid down on a bathroom floor, so I wouldn't even go to sleep. You know, I felt if I laid in the bed, I wouldn't went to sleep. So I laid on the bathroom floor, and um, I had my head up to the ceiling, and um, I just listened to the guided meditation, and um, it helped me. It was called like a hemi sync guided meditation, and it took me to a space of. I could say like a self type of hypnosis, like because it made me to re- it, it helped me to realize things that I was doing wrong, and it just brought awareness to to my traits and my habits. So it was like a hypnosis of how do I break these traits, how do I break these habits, and um, yeah, man, and it, that's incredible. Yeah, it regenerated my brain for real. And so now you're a disciple, like you tell. I mean, I yeah. imagine you tell got, everybody, right? Have you tried this? Have you tried this? Yeah. And that's what, that's what, you know, that's when you go back to, like, um, I'm not a religious person. I just s- s- simply believe in God and prayer. You know, that's what works for me. But once you go back to, like, the Bible and stuff, once you look at, like, ca- the characters in the Bible, like Jesus, right, um, the type of life that Jesus lived was a life that, that was called on by purpose of God. And then, as far as that, he created a testimony which was he went through these different phases. He went through these different um, journeys to try to bring people along to what God had over his life. Or he did all these things, and and by the end of his life, he he sacrificed and you know put his life on the line for all the people that loved him and and followed him, and even the people that disliked him. So that's what a testimony is. How do you create? How do you go through things in your life and make it to where other people can relate to it? Because a lot of people go through the same things. We're all one. We're all humans. You know what I'm saying? I'm black. You white. You probably got somebody Chinese. You probably got somebody Hispanic. But at the end of the day, when we sit down, we face the same problems. So it's like, how do I become a testimony to help those people that's going through that, you know? That's incredible. Mm -hmm. All right. A couple more things. Most important, when's the last time you touched a basketball? Uh... I don't know. <laughs> it's a celebrity game tonight. <laughs> yeah, man. It's a celebrity uh, game. You're in. The, you're in the game. Yeah, you're, I did you're hooping them. tonight mm-hmm. at FedEx Forum. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. When's the last time? When's From the last time you think he touched I'm a, a dunk basketball? Song, man. A week ago. Can he still hoop? He cold. <laughs> can you dunk? Yeah, I can dunk. Oh. If I scratch. I got to stretch. Make sure you stretch. (laughs) Make sure you stretch. You got a celebrity game tonight, and so this this is the first time, at least, have you played on FedEx Forum's court? Oh, nah. I don't think so. Big moment. I it walked is. it. I walked it right. This my. This is the closest I get to the NBA as of right now. Have you Have you played against any other rappers? Oh yeah, a lot of rappers. Who can hoop? Oh, Chris Brown. Very great hooper. Chris Brown. Chris hoop. Brown can hoop. Yeah, yeah. He's I've good. seen Quavo in the celebrity stuff the NBA yeah. does. Quavo this, can hoop. Lil Dicky can hoop. Lil Dicky. Can yeah. Lil Dicky can play. <laughs> Lil Dicky can hoop. He's tall as hell. Yeah, he is. He's, he's tall. Like, yeah, yeah, he's like six six. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's Lil Dicky six six. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Like he's tall. Yeah, he's tall. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. He, they say he can hoop. I know Quavo can hoop. Jack Harlow not as much. <laughs> uh, who else? Snoop obviously can hoop. Who else? Lil baby, uh-huh. Lil baby was rough. Yeah, 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 Cooley. So you got so we're, we we got big things expected for you tonight. I can't wait. Never mind. Yeah. Lil Diggy's like six feet tall. Oh God. Yeah, I thought he was What's tall. Wrong with that. you? What's wrong? <laughs> with you? He's like six feet. I'm like yeah. six six. But wow. but Chris yeah. Brown. Yeah, he can hoop. How about that? He can really hoop. I mean, I know he can dance. That so. makes sense. Yeah. He probably yeah. cross you yeah. over, right? Yeah. Huh? I, I, I can believe Chris Brown can do. I can yeah. believe that dude's an athlete. You think yeah. if you would have stuck with it, you would have been better at basketball or football? Um, I was actually better at football than basketball. But I was real good in basketball. And um, basketball was my favorite sport. I was even ranked as, like, one of the guards in Tennessee at a point in time. Nice. But I was better in football. One time in football, I scored – so many touchdowns, the referee said um, I couldn't touch the ball anymore because it was unsportsmanlike conduct. <laughs> yeah. I, had, I had eight touchdowns. You scored so many that Briarcrest yeah. recruited you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he said, give us that dude. <laughs> Does he go to school here? No. Nope. <laughs> nope, he doesn't go to school here. <laughs> They recruited you to Prior Christ, even though you didn't go to school there. That's incredible. So what's next for music? What um, you got cooking? So t- currently I'm working on an album for um, April 14th. I'm dropping oh, it. Um, April it's called, 14th? Yeah, man. Soon? Mm-hmm. Right during the playoffs? Like three weeks. Like three, three or four weeks. So it's called Cottonwood 2. You know, it's, um, it's my best body of work. You know, it's extremely versatile. I got a song for people that want to dance, song for people that just want to ride, song for people that just want to turn up. It's whatever. Like, it's just a real diverse album, my best body of work. So do you feel like it's harder now that now, mm-hmm. now, that, you, now, that, now that you've had so much success, now that people have like, come to expect, like, here's what I get when mm-hmm. I listen to NLE Chopper, that you have to, you have to keep people on their toes, like reinvent yourself, give them yeah. something different than yeah. what you've done every time, or else everybody's just going to say, oh, yeah, all the songs sound the same. And yeah. so it's always the challenge of an artist, right? Yeah. You know, but, you know, we, I'm the type of person I never, like, run from a rebirth, you know, because, you know, I just always want to be able to change. I always want to look back and be like, yo, that person that I'm looking back at is dead. Like, this person is alive, you know. I feel like life is about dying to live. You know, we have to evolve. Um, if we're the same person we was five, six years ago, we ain't really doing nothing. We're stagnant. So I just love growth, you know. Yep. You look good on me. <laughs> Features on this one? Um, so currently I could give a few of them. I got Lil Wayne, um, that's the big goat, and I got to go with the baby goat, um, Polo G. You know? Oh, jeez. So, yeah. It's Both gonna, of them are going to be on the album? Yeah, yeah, it's stacked. Like, on, I got an album in the deluxe. It's going to be over, like, 16 features. It's stacked. 16 features? Yeah, it's stacked. I've never had a project with a lot of features either. It just kind of came about. <laughs> it's stacked. 16? Yeah. But it's, it's like DJ Khaled. <laughs> it's, a lot, yeah, it's a lot of songs, though. Like Another DJ, one. Yeah. <laughs> DJ Khaled's album came out. It's like, all oh, the feature. Or Metro Boomin', right? Yeah. yeah. So you've got, all, you've got Polo G and Lil Wayne, mm-hmm. and there's at least 14 others? Yeah, so. Holy when I'm, when I'm, On the first project, I'm dropping 22 songs, and then I'm going to drop a deluxe with eight songs. So 22 songs? Yeah, yeah. I got a lot of music I'm sitting on. Yeah. How many songs would you say? Like 700 unreleased songs. What? Yeah, I have a lot of music. I record it. You said 700? Yeah. I record a lot. <laughs> Like, 700? I don't know if that's common, but I do believe there are tons of these artists that are sitting on so much unreleased stuff that it's just, yeah. for whatever reason, it's just like it doesn't fit the album, and so it didn't make the cut, and that happens with like every album you make. Yeah. Can you even remember those songs? Yeah, I remember every one of them. Mm-hmm. So if I just played a beat of one of the 700, you'd be able to do the song? Yeah. No yeah. way. <laughs> I, don't, I wish we could have tested this. Yeah. 700 unreleased songs. Uh, That's incredible. Oh, yeah, Jaren. I told him about that. I told him about that. Jaren, trying to get me and Jaren on the song. Yeah. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. All right, tonight Make it's going to be at halftime. Yeah. It's Hoops for St. Jude. Make sure you head over to the website today, and you can do all the donations, and you can be a part of this, and you can support these different players that are going to be a part of this tonight, including NLE Chapa. Uh, tonight, fans can support their favorite celebs by making a donation to the team's donation page. Fans who donate will be entered into a drawing for a special edition gold Grizzlies basketball signed by all the participating celebrities. And you can find out all information on all of this at grizzlies.com slash St. Jude. There's the uh, codes for Team Brevin and Team Elliot. I can't wait to see you hoop tonight. Thanks for coming in, man. Right, thank y'all for having me. NLE um. Chopper. All right, it's going to do it for the show. Thanks to Kelsey Wright Johnson. Thanks to Devin Walker. Thanks to John Rosa across the glass. We'll be back tomorrow. Until then, we gone.